this is about the degrees in the end. Is it worthless? Do people who are in school right now need to drop out? If you're in school right now, should you switch your major over? Like, what does that mean? The White House, along with the National Cyber Director, decided that they're going to change the standard for their cybersecurity and other tech-related IT jobs across the federal government. And they're hoping that this will inspire other companies in the private sector to take action as well. Because we already know the truth, right? You don't need a degree to prove your competence in tech. There are plenty of ways to go about this. But is this entirely good news? I have questions and maybe you should have some questions about this too. I'm not jumping for joy just yet because I have questions about this and its impact for all job seekers, no matter if you are entry level, self-taught, the Biden administration is making changes to their 2200 series of technical jobs. Now, these jobs are about 100,000 jobs across the federal government. Currently, they are still traditional resume education based. So if you are in the market, you should head over to usajobs.gov and look through their site and see if there's anything there. Many of them have deadlines. These jobs, they're going to change from their traditional resume based education reliant to skill base. So what does that mean? Now, instead of having to submit your resume to prove yourself with your education, now we're going to take an exam. But what kind of exam is it going to be? That's one of the questions. If you don't have a standard yet, you don't have a framework yet, we don't know what's going to be on these skills exams. Not having a degree as a requirement means there's going to be more applicants. So more applicants is more competition for you. That's good news for them because that puts them in the position to be selective. If you're talking about hundreds or thousands of applicants, then you're going to have hundreds of people who could be scoring in the top one or 5% of these exams. How are you going to stand out? Who is going to stand out? That remains to be seen. Are we going to see a profile of the people who score the highest? In a traditional interview, they will usually call you in and then you have to explain and give examples. There's usually a behavioral aspect, some type of problem solving or a whiteboard or a give me scenario. Now you're still going to be competing with a combination of people who have a degree, don't have a degree, self-taught, boot camp, dropout, you name it. Now, who are they going to favor after the rest of the interview? Because if we discover that the profile of the type of people who are being offered the jobs are people with 10 plus years of experience, a dozen certifications and Kamsha and Cisco, CCNAs, cybersecurity, advanced level degrees, advanced level certifications, then did the skill base exams really help the job seekers or did it just help the employer? My next concern is the cost. To increase your odds of getting and scoring high on the exam, there's usually some preparation material that's a small fee. How is that going to impact people who are unemployed, were laid off, or live below the poverty line? To be told that now, once again, they have to pay again, continue to invest in their tech skills, and they don't know if it's going to guarantee them a job. Either the federal government is going to offer this preparation material, or other companies who usually offer certifications like Cisco, Comsha, Microsoft, or AWS, they might see it as an opportunity to have study material, which is great because you can find something to study for. But the flip side of that is 
if you don't have the money or you're just sick and tired of spending more money trying to invest in yourself, trying to have all these tech skills, in-demand tech skills, you're doing projects, you're studying, and now, oh great, I have to pay more money for study material. But I could be wrong. Let's see what happens, but I think we should start questioning the motive and the impact, whether positive or negative, that is gonna have on us as the job seekers and people who want to protect their careers, future-proof and prepare for promotions. The next question that came up is the experience part, because if there's no degree to evaluate you on, then what's left? Your experience, your hands-on projects. Where do most people get their experience? So if you are an entry-level person, a new grad or a career changer like I was, gaining technical experience is still a challenge. See, we don't know what's on the exam if it's covering breath, a little bit of everything, depth, a deep understanding in a few topics, or a variety of topics that are adjacent to the technology. If you're doing cybersecurity, are there going to be additional questions on networking? Or are they going to ask you behavioral questions such as management, project management, conflict resolution, teamwork, any combination of skills, hard skills and soft skills that are often needed and evaluated during the job process. Do you think this is going to have some type of unintended consequence? The next question is the certifications, will they matter here? We solved one problem with favoring people with college degrees and now we are potentially favoring people with certifications. And this could be good news, bad news, depending on how you look at it, because there are plenty of certification authorities that offer a low cost, sometimes free, sometimes a voucher. And there are plenty of content creators now who are creating courses, low and free courses out here that can prepare you for a variety of tech tools. And since it's IT based, there's a variety of places you can go to, to learn. A lot of the job offers that's coming my way now are related to the certs in a niche technology. And for some people, that's the case. It opened up new opportunities and new doors. What do you think? This could be good news if you're trying to avoid the student loan debt and the heavy commitment for two to four years of your life into university. But hold up, before you drop out or rip up your degree, there are some parts that matter. For example, there are some community colleges, I attended one, that offer courses that prepared you for certifications like networking, cloud, cybersecurity, CCNA through Cisco. And there's another university, WGU, that also specializes in higher level degrees, but along the way, you can earn certifications. You don't necessarily have to dedicate all four years of your life. You can earn a couple of certifications, get hands-on internship, apprenticeship, real world projects, and start looking for work right away. And then you attend school part-time. As you're finishing your degree, you're now employed, you're getting hands-on skills, you're earning another certification. And within a few years, you'll have completed a degree and have earned a degree. We keep being told that AI and machine learning is taking jobs, it's replacing us, but we still need to hire people who have these skills. Some people might think a college degree may not be worth it, even with all that said and done. And that's something that can be argued. Definitely, we can have open dialogue about that. But there are also some people who say, well, it depends on what you want for your career. So ask yourself, what kind of lifestyle do you want? If the lifestyle you want requires a six-figure income, well, what are your options? And does the options include needing a college degree or can you go down a path of earning certifications to keep yourself um, employable? Because at the end of the day, you want to maintain your employability. In order to do that, you're going to have to upskill eventually. And according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, computer and IT roles are still growing much faster than average. 
they're predicting that there's going to be over 300,000 new jobs between now and to uh, 2030. People keep asking when are the tech jobs coming back, but they're going to be coming back slowly. And right now they're still favoring people with degrees, years of experience and certifications. So the question is, where do you want to be when all this goes down? I researched and found a job that is currently looking for college graduate. If you are a recent grad and entry level, and I did have a commenter who said that it's really hard for the college grads. I'll put a link in my description and that job is going to close in a couple of weeks. And they put on the website that once they receive a certain amount of applicants, they're done. It's for an IT specialist. This is 100% remote. Let me know if you applied and let me know if you got the job. Sound off in the comments. What do you think all this news is going to do for you? Is this going to make our job market better?